Hey guys, uh, so when spring break started this week, I was really hoping that I'd just be able to finish this project I was thinking about doing. Um, basically, we have a water problem in our basement, so we have two sump pumps in our basement. Each sump pump is roughly five feet in the ground, and occasionally, maybe a couple times a year, they do overflow, and that's either because of failure, uh, either the floats fail or just the power goes out and we don't know about it so that'll happen when we fall asleep we'll wake up in the morning go downstairs and there's tons of water down there so i figured to solve this problem i'd build something that would sense how much water was in the pumps and even if there is no power it's still going to warn us and alarm us that uh the water is too high so basically to do this i figured well the easy easiest way to do this is using ultrasonic sensors and if you've seen another video of mine, you've seen where I've used these ultrasonic sensors to uh, sense how far away an object was. I have three of these things. Um, they're pretty cheap, especially if you don't buy brand name ones. They all work, uh, as long as you can get the programming working. Um, anyways, uh, another problem I figured I was going to have is if I use these sensors, these are open sensors. They're not meant to be in high humidity areas and maybe if it ever did get wet because the water got too high well that'd be a big problem it would just fail so i figured well i'll get these waterproof ultrasonic sensors now they're you're not really supposed to submerge them in water but they're meant to be in high humidity areas so i figured uh, these are going to be a lot better now i did read online that these sensors are a lot less sensitive and it takes a lot more power to actually amplify the sound that goes out of them and I kind of assumed, well, maybe I can just take this board and just plug these waterproof sensors in and maybe it'll just work. Uh, I did desolder the old ultrasonic sensors from this specific board and I tried uh, these waterproof ultrasonic sensors with this board and it just didn't work. Uh, these sensors just simply aren't uh, sensitive enough. They have a different impedance, a different capacitance they're much different uh, how they work so uh, what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna build my own circuit uh, the company recommends a specific circuit using a 555 timer a 0 0.01 microfarad capacitor whether it's monolithic ceramic electrolytic whatever capacitor you want to use if you can find it and then two 1 kilo ohm resistors in series uh, creating a voltage divider into the 555 timer and that'll generate a roughly 40 kilohertz tone for the uh, ultrasonic sensor, the waterproof one. And you actually have to use a transistor because the current and amper or the actual voltage that comes out of the 555 timer isn't enough to be able to really push that ultrasonic sensor to be loud enough to be actually sent or sensed at all because it, it's just not very loud if you don't use some type of transistor or amplifier. So I can show you what's actually going on in the circuit when uh, I turn this on. I'll compare the actual board and what the company recommends for the transmitter using the 555 timer. So I'll, I'll allow more current to flow and then I'm gonna bump this up to 4.8 volts. And it doesn't have to be five volts. It's a little safe to just keep it at 4.8. It still works, it has a wide voltage range so it doesn't really matter. Um, and then I'll ground my oscilloscope. And then I'll connect it to the 555 timer. And you're going to see this pulse that's generated. My oscilloscope reads it as being 41.38 kilohertz. And the top of the voltage is 3.6 volts. Now, of course, I th throw it through the transistor and it bumps it up to... Uh, the full voltage that is connected to my power supply it drops a little bit of voltage but not much um, and that amplifies the, so the sound to the waterproof ultrasonic sensor uh, the biggest difference that you are going to notice when you actually use the water the pre-built board that you can buy online for maybe about seven dollars is that it actually amplifies and almost doubles the voltage that's coming out so if I actually connect this up should have done this before but nevertheless let's take a look at the transmitter side we're going to see a much much different circuit so I'll zoom in on that 
So this is obviously a much, much different uh, pulse being sent to the sensor itself. You can easily see there's a big difference in voltage. So if I go back to the 555 timer after the transistor, so let me connect it up after the transistor. One second. This is what lo it looks like after the transistor. It looks like a, a bit messy, but that's just because of how the circuit works with the actual uh, uh, sensor itself. That's just because of resistance and capacitance of the sensor. So I'll just connect it right up to the 555 timer and you can see the voltage, the, the height of the voltage is much different. You're only getting 3.6 volts. So if I connect it back up to the uh, pre-built board, you're gonna see the voltage is gonna jump pretty much twice. So it's actually 8.8 .8 volts and the frequency is a little bit different, 42.42 kilohertz. But it's, it's pretty much the same. The peak uh, center frequency of the waterproof ultrasonic sensor is actually supposed to be 40 kilohertz, but it's not awful to be off by a couple kilohertz. It's, it's good to be really close to the center frequency, but it doesn't really matter if you're off by one or two. Um, and that's about it for the circuit. Uh, I'm right now for the receiver side of the circuit that I'm going to build, I'm just waiting for an LM386 audio amplifier, which amplifies, uh, basically the voltage and allows a lot more current to the flow through versus the LM, I think I have an LM356, uh, which doesn't allow much current to flow, so it's harder to get the circuit to work if it's uh, allowing a lot of the current flow. So um, what I'm going to show you now is actually the water pump sensor, uh, the actual user interface, which is probably mo the most interesting part of this. So as you can see here, this is a little LCD screen that I have plugged in to, to my microcontroller. I have a PIC16F 1938 running this. Uh, and I can show you what it does when it first starts up. So I'm going to shut off all the curtain, current. I'm going to allow the current to flow through. And now you can see this little loading screen pop up. Uh, whoops, sorry, I didn't allow enough current to flow through. So I'll restart that one more time. So you can see this little loading screen. I program that. You don't have to make it do that. It's not actually loading anything. It just looks cool. And then it'll put dots across. It'll say water pump sensor created by William Callahan, revision 1.0, and it'll have a little blinking dot uh, for that as in it's showing that it's still working. And then it'll have a title, current water levels. Uh, the pump A is 0%. I don't have anything plugged into the port on the microcontroller to actually display how high that uh, would be. But um, for pump B, I do have it plugged in right now, but because I never actually got the circuit to work yet with the waterproof ultrasonic sensor, it just says it reads 0%. And then I, I, I want to use the last line of this four uh, row LCD, so I just figured I can throw in a cheap temperature sensor just to uh, display the temperature. I haven't plugged that in yet, but it'll just display it in degrees Fahrenheit. And then I actually have four buttons connected to the microcontroller on the interrupt on change pins. So I have the global, global interrupts turned on on the microcontroller and then the interrupt on change uh, interrupts turned on for ports zero through three. Uh, so that's a total of four buttons um, and I can click any button. And it'll bring me to a setup menu. So I'll hit a button and it says setup men menu and you have two options basically just to calibrate the pump sensor or the thermometer setup. Uh, basically the same kind of idea and another problem I figured I might run into is well if I hit the setup button well it's never gonna be actually checking the water levels in the setup menu unless I program it to and that's just a pain to do so I figured the easiest way to avoid that is just have a timer uh, to count how long before another button is pressed and then if a button isn't pressed in enough time then it'll just go back to the main menu or the main screen so I can wait I think uh, I don't know what the exact time is. I just have a for loop uh, going through a bunch of integers and until it hits the end of the loop, it'll just go back to the main screen right about now. So that's like the third time I showed you. So I'll go back to the main screen and you can see this little cursor that's gonna display what line uh, is selected and I can go down or up, whatever I want, go down to exit. And I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna hit the right button or what would be the right button to go into that menu. And then I can either calibrate pump A or calibrate pump B. 
and I guess I'll do B. It's going to be the same exact menu for both A and B. And it'll just tell you to place an object one foot from the ultrasonic sensor. Uh, and you should do that beforehand. And then you can hit the save button. You can go down and hit save. And when you hit save, uh, it'll actually save that value of how far away uh, an object is from the sensor in the EEPROM. So if this thing ever does lose power, then you don't have to recalibrate it. So that makes it really convenient. Uh, so I'll go down to the thermometer setup, and it's a little more interesting here. Uh, I'll go into that submenu. Well, I hit the back button, sorry. So I'll go down into that menu, and you have two options here. You can calibrate the thermometer, and basically in that, all you're going to do is it's going to tell you the current temperature, and it's going to allow you to add a couple degrees or subtract a couple degrees. So I'll go back up to the next, or back up to the upper submenu, and then I'll, I can actually select the units and I'll just have an equation in the microcontroller to convert uh, from Fahrenheit to Celsius if you'd like, but I don't think anybody's actually going to be using Celsius in this house. Uh, and that's about it. And of course you've got every save button. In fact, uh, I might have to remove that. I programmed this all myself. I didn't use any help online except for actually in initializing the LCD. I had to do a little bit of research to actually understand how to send commands to this LCD because this is not a serial connection this is a parallel connection and it's using 4-bit mode so I have to it, it made it a lot easier just to use 4-bit mode I save a lot more pins and I can reuse them for different purposes on the microcontroller itself uh, but using parallel mode I think is honestly easier than serial mode and it gives me a much better understanding how this LCD works so that's about it for this project so I'm gonna keep you guys updated uh, with how this project is going. I'm waiting for the LM386 audio amplifier to come in. And when that comes in, I'll let you guys know. I'll finish this project up. It shouldn't take more than a day after it comes in. And that's about it. So thanks for watching.